Today we're going to learn about naming notes. By the end of this lesson, you will understand how to name notes in the treble clef as well as in the bass clef. So first of all, it's interesting to know that um, back in medieval times, back when Robin Hood was stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, they actually used 11 lines to write the music. And there'd be notes all over the place. And depending on how far apart those notes were, that would tell you how long the duration of the note was. How long did you hold the note? But it was very confusing to read. It was hard to see and it was hard to understand or quickly figure out what note you were supposed to be playing or singing. But just like our staff today, if the notes were higher up on the clef, the pitch or the sound is higher. If there's lower on the lines, it would be a lower pitch. So the more they looked at this, the more they realized that it just wasn't working. So they decided to simplify it by creating two smaller staves. The higher of the smaller staves, they called the treble clef. And the lower of the two staves, they called the bass clef. And right in the middle is middle C. So a lot of people know about middle C, but most people don't know why it's called middle C. A lot of people think it's called middle C because it's in the middle of the piano. It's actually not in the middle of the piano, but it is in the middle of these two staves. It's in the middle of the treble clef and the bass clef. So that's why we call it middle C. So once you know where middle C is, you can find every single note on the staff starting from that point. But you have to use the musical alphabet. The biggest difference between the regular alphabet and the musical alphabet is that the musical alphabet only has seven letters. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Every line and every space on the staff represents one of these letters. So we know that this node in the middle is called C. Not just any C, it's middle C. So from that point, we can move up and down the staff naming all of these notes. So if you look at the alphabet, directly above C is D. Above D is E, followed by F, G, and then we cycle back to A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. G is right above that top line. Now, if we wanted a higher note, I can always add in a line. And of course, that note now is going to be called A. And above that line is B. You can go on and on like this forever, as high as you like. It's a little trickier going down. We're gonna start at middle C again, and moving down our musical alphabet below C is B. Below B is A, and now we've got to cycle back to the end of our musical alphabet with G, F, E, D, C, B, and A. Again, if I want to keep going, I can cycle back to my G again, G, Below G is F. Yeah. Next, we're gonna talk about speed tools. In this last example, 
as you can see, it's not much easier to find the notes if you have to do that full musical alphabet every single time you need to find a note. So we came up with speed tools. Speed tools allow us to find the note faster. And we use rhymes and sayings to help us do that. So in the treble clef, we're gonna look first at the line notes. So here are our line notes. I'm just using whole notes here so that we can see very clearly where those notes fall. For the lines in the treble clef, we use a rhyme as the speed tool. The rhyme that we use is every, good, boy, deserves, fudge. So the bottom note is E on the line. Then you have G, B, D, and F. Now for the spaces. So if I draw notes in these spaces, it looks like this. And these notes are F, A, C, E. So instead of using a rhyme in this case, we just know that those spaces spell the word face. And now for the bass clef. First, the lines in the bass clef. I'm gonna draw these notes. Again, they're whole notes I'm drawing on the lines. Here we also use a rhyme. The rhyme for the bass clef is good, Boys deserve fudge always. Now I just want to mention you can use any rhyme for these as long as your rhyme starts with these letters. So you could do Good boys deserve fudge always. You could say glad bags don't fall apart. You can say George Bush died from anthrax. Whatever you want, it doesn't really matter as long as it spells out um, G, B, D, F, and A. That's what makes it a speed tool because it's got to match the notes that you're given. Now for the spaces in the bass clef. The spaces in the bass clef also use a rhyme. And typically people use the rhyme, all cows eat grass. And again, the first letter of each word tells us what our note is. Okay, so now we have our treble clef and our bass clef. The biggest thing to know when you have a grand staff, that's what this is called when we have the two staffs together, they call it a grand staff, or the two clefs together, it's called a grand staff. There's a lot of space between the two staffs. So a lot of people assume that because there's so much space that there's actually a lot of notes in between the two staffs. But we know that that's not true. We know there's not a ton of space between these two staffs because we saw that originally these two staffs were linked. So really between the two staffs, all we have, all we have is middle C, one note above middle C, and one note below middle C. So there's only three notes between those two staves. So let's do some note naming. 
We'll do a line note in the treble clef, space note in the treble clef, maybe above in the treble clef, line, space, space, line, space. So here's a few different notes so we can name them. So we need to remember all the different speed tools. So in the treble clef, we have every good boy deserves fudge on the lines. So let's do the lines first. The first one, every good boy deserves. That's a D. Find another line note, here it is. Every good boy deserves. That's another D. The next one, every good boy, it's a B. Now we're gonna look at the space notes. So our first space note, we know that for spaces we use the word face, so F-A-C-E. This one's in the bottom space, so that would be an F. If you have something above or below the staff, you wanna go to the note that you can name easily with your speed tool. So I know that this top line, every good boy deserves fudge, that top line is an F. So right about F in our... 